come and fill out a little box and we'll do our best to get these lessons to you in a timely manner. We are continuing our subject matter, Christ for the crisis, amen? And we are about two lessons shy of bringing this 35 series part to its close. It's almost a year worth of preaching and if you were to go every Sabbath, amen? Our thematic text, what, can we quote it? Proverbs 27, 12, a what? Prudent man foreseeth the evil and hides himself, and the simple pass on, and they are what? Um, have mercy. Our thematic quote, we are told in volume 8, page 28, that we who know the truth, we should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. And my dear friends, tonight I appeal to you as best as I know how. We need to get ready. We must get ready, not just spiritually, but there is also a practical preparedness that is needful for the people of God. Tonight our prayer should be, Lord, hold, hold, hold back those winds in the, the political winds the, so that we can get ourselves together. Ellen White says in early writings that when she saw the remnant, she said, there's a, a level of lethargy that's over our churches. This lukewarmness. And the angel said, get ready, get ready. And this was written over 100 years ago. And if we were to get ready back then, I think we should be ready today. Amen? We're told again that procrastination is a thief of time. And tonight, if we do not now act, we will force brothers and sisters to react. Amen? So may God help us. We believe that the next massive move in the prophetic time frame is a national Sunday law. We call it the mark of the beast. And when this law is passed, I'm telling you, saints, life will never be the same for us. It will alter the existence of seven Adventists forever. You know, I am a, I, I, I like history, and I don't know, I have this, I don't think it's good. I have this obsessive, compulsive thing about the Holocaust. <laughs> I'm telling you, that. If it's out there, I've watched it. And I've, I just bought this new series from the Barnes and Nobles um, about the Holocaust. And it's a different, and I'm telling you, it, it's just amazing how, how, you know, when Hitler came into, what, what brought him into power? You know, it was the economy. The, Vers the Versailles Treaty had stripped Germany of everything. And they wanted a leader who would bring them back to power, and, and it was the economy. And, you know, when Hitler came in, he just took his time and then he just boxed everybody in. And then six million Jews suffered this from this lunatics. We got to get ready, saints. We believe that what happened back then will happen again. And all these things are traced on the pages of history. So we can look back and be ready for what is coming upon the world. Tonight we are continuing uh, the 144,000 part two. And we have three parts Next week, God's willing, we will be able to bring this session to its close. Now, we have been admonished that as we study the 144,000 that she, um, she, she, she counsels us not to get into these contentions. Amen? It's a wonderful study, and we ought to know about it. She says that it is not his will that we should get into any controversy over questions which will not help them spiritually, such as who is to comprise the 144,000? Those who are the elect of God will in a short time know without a doubt. And C.D. Brooks once said, you know, he wonders where God's going to find so many. <laughs> but the world today has gone crazy and the church is no different from the world, right? But with all that said, it is possible for us to be among that number, amen? And we are told that we are to strive, beloved, with all the power that God has given us to be among the 140 and 4,000, whether it's literal or symbolic, let us strive with all our powers to be among that group. We've learned, just a quick revision, that there are two ways to get to heaven. What are they? Now, this guy, you know, he's not striving. He looks like he's just... So I know it's neo admin He's just relaxing, right? Now, we looked at the two ways that we can get to heaven. What are they? A resurrection or what else? And again, everybody who plans to get to heaven in this edifice tonight, you will either be one of these two groups. There's no third group. Either you'll be resurrected or we'll be translated. I don't know about you. I want to, I want to go the translation way, right? 
Now, we looked at the total sum of the redeemed now, that if we are redeemed, you know, from this earth, apart from, as Elder Dennis brought a good point, what, where, where would you put Enoch and where would you put Elijah? Right, that's a good question. I don't know where you put them yet, right? But when I find out, I'll tell you, right? Right, because they didn't die in another part of 144,000. But the total redeemed will be divided into one of these two groups. Now, I'm going to show you that they are not the same group. Now, I know some people may differ, but I'm going to show you tonight. They are not the same group in substance or in character, right? We will either be among the great multitude, and we believe that those represent everyone who will have died in Jesus. And the 144, these are they which will not taste death, right? If you need a mic, um, Brother Kosh will help us out, please. If you have your hand up, just we'll, 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 um, we'll, we'll acknowledge it, but we need a mic to speak to the... Um... Right, go ahead, sir. Now, hold on. Let me just say this as we go. Beloved, only God and heaven alone is infallible. Amen. And let me put that one out there. Again, you know, so you may have a different view. We're not here to argue. We're here to study. Amen? Amen. And we do welcome your point of view, all right? I see one, and then we'll have two. Go ahead, Brother Kosh. I totally agree that those, not, those two groups are different. Uh -huh. And the reason for that is, which is very simple... Mm -hmm. The 144,000 will be alive when Christ comes. Uh -huh. So that means they would say nobody who died before Christ comes is going to heaven. Mm -hmm. if, that, if, that was, if there was the same thing. Exactly. exactly. So, so, you know, so I know. Just deductive reason. Excellent yes. point. Yes. Sister Francis, go ahead. I have a question. With regard, oh, you to, speak up, like with regard to the 144,000, um, is there a type and anti type? Um, the reason why I ask is because you mentioned Elijah and Enoch. And Elijah and Enoch. They, they, they're, they'll be a type. Elijah and Enoch. Um, they were translated. Yes. Because they didn't see death. They didn't see death. Now, Moses, Moses, Moses re was resurrected. He, right. Yeah. So, um, He'd be those, a type of the great multitude, so probably. Those, so those two um, events um, is typical of what's going to take place yes. in the future. So mm -hmm. um, is that type? Yeah, and, definitely. Um, and then the resurrection and the translation in the future is anti type. Yes, because. Excellent point. Moses died and was resurrected, so he would probably be fall under the great multitude. Enoch and Elijah. Now, why, why those two? I've always wondered why God had only Moses to be resurrected and not somebody else, and then he had Enoch and Elijah. Now, and this is, this, this is important now. Enoch had the character. Elijah had the message. What am I saying? Some people may have the message, but they don't have the character. Are you with me? So it's not just the message you're preaching. You also have to live it. Make sense? So, but excellent, excellent point, right? Now, a quick, quick revision, because we need to get into this evening's lesson, of, of what we've learned last week. We, 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 we highlighted four things about the 144. Things. What were they that we learned? One, that they are the only ones who will enter the temple where? In heaven, right? And why? Because they'll be the spiritual Levites. And they will serve God throughout all eternity, right? Number two, we learned B, that they will serve God in the temple day and... That's the same thing. Day and night. Day and night. They'll, and and not, they're not, not going to be like a literal night, but it's just for eternity, right? And we learned C, that they will never taste death. And that, and that is a high privilege, right? Now, we're going to go into our study tonight now, and number, which is D in your paper, this is such a powerful um, blessing for the 144,000. The 144,000 now will tour the universe with Jesus. You know, I don't know about you, but when a, a, a buddy of mine, he, he used to be in the, in the, in the reggae, reggae industry. And um, he, he got out, but he used to tell me that when, you know, when the, when the big stars would go on tour, they would, he would go with them. And he would just get like, you know, the, he would get, come on on stage like at 8 o'clock. Nobody's, the stand is empty anyway. <laughs> Nobody's there. But just to be able to be on tour with the, with the big dog. Because, you know, when you go to dance in Jamaica, the big dog comes on at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock. That, that, that's, that's, that's time for sleeping. But that's, that, that's how they do it, man. You know, all the small fries touch the mic from 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Sun is hot. Ain't nobody in the stand. But the stars come out at Two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. That's when they said dance is nice for lack of a word, right? But the 144, we will, they will have an unusual privilege. This is imperative now. They will tour the whole with Jesus. Now, I'm going to read it now. Revelation chapter 14, we find these verses. It's on the screen. I look and low. 
And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, uh -huh. and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. All right, verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Uh -huh. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now focus on verse 4. It's very imperative now. Please read now. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Uh -huh. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Now we're going to focus on the yellow next week, but I want to hone in tonight on the white. These are they which follow the Lamb. Where? Now, who is the Lamb? Jesus. And this is not some some sim, some symbol. This is going to be this is going to be something real. Wherever Jesus goes in the entire universe, and tonight the universe is huge, they will follow Jesus, just like how uh, the chickens. The chicks follow the hen. Wherever Jesus goes, the 144 will have this unique and rare privilege. Mrs. White says this now. She says we need not wait till we are what? Translated. To do what? Follow Christ. So stop, stop there. What is this? What is this? What is this saying now? What, what, what have you gathered from that? From, from, from that, 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 that first sentence. Look at it, man. We have studied now. Critical thinking now. What is that saying to us? We should not be wait until we are caught up to meet Christ in the air. All right. Okay. What else? Better catch what you got the mic. What, what, what do you get from that? That first, that first sentence. Um, if she's saying that um, you don't need to wait to follow Christ, like being translated. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be translated, she. You can't be talk she can't be talking about like a character for heaven mm -hmm. because if you're translated then that isn't implied that you were you developed Christ's character in able to be translated. So it would um, allude to uh, your point that she she's actually talking about literally following. All right, all right, all right. Now that brother was critical thinking. Mercy boy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's some trigonometry right there. You know what I'm <laughs> But what she's saying, though, she's affirming the fact that the only folks who will follow Jesus are who? Those who are that's, what, that's what it's saying. It's right there. If you plan to follow Jesus, you're going to have to be translated. Yeah. And the only people who will follow him are those. Are you with me? Yeah. Then she says, now, God's people may do here below. We shall follow the Lamb in the courts above in the courts above. That's imperative now. What language is that now? Heavenly. No, but what kind of language is that? Courts? No, that's not the future. Talk to me now. That's sanctuary language. Courts above. See, if you don't follow him in the, by, in the, by faith. Now, question now. All right. Following him in heaven depends on us keeping his commandments. Now, we are not to follow Christ fitfully or capriciously when it is for our own advantage. Now let's go back to the course above now. Question now. We know that Jesus, brothers and sisters, when he left heaven, he left earth, in 31 AD he went to heaven. Yes. And he spent 1810 years in the holy place. Amen. Right? And then in 1844 he moved. Now, if you're going to follow Christ in heaven, what must you have to have done in 1844? You can follow him? Right? By faith. You're going to have to follow him by faith. Now, by the way, the lifestyle that was lived in the holy place, right, on, was a totally different lifestyle that was lived in the most in the holy, in, 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 in the mo most in ho holy place. Now, let me say this. You see, in, in this, right here, you may can, you can get away with some stuff. But once you get here, it's a totally different lifestyle. Because we're living in the day of atonement. So we're going to have to follow him by faith. 
But I'm telling you, right here, you may get away, get away with wearing some bangla and some chaparita. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but once you get over here, that stuff got to drop off. They have a tone. I'm telling you. You go and relive the curse 23. Solemn and searching day of atonement. So it's a different lifestyle. She says, now then in speech, we must choose. We must choose to follow him. In daily life, we must follow his example. Uh-huh. As a flock trustfully follow its shepherd. Uh-huh. We are to follow him by suffering for his sake. Uh-huh. Saying at every step, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Uh-huh. His life practice must be our life uh-huh. practice. And as we thus seek to be like him and to bring our wills into conformity to his will, we shall reveal him. So that's, we, get a, we get a broad picture of what it means to follow Christ, right? It doesn't mean walking behind him. It means we are to follow him in reading, Amen. in truth, in dress, in temperance, in purity, in recreation, and also in music. Are you following Christ tonight, right? Spurgeon says, the essence of obe- the exactness of obedience is the very essence of obedience. Dare to be a little bit inconsistent with yourselves, if need be, than be inconsistent with God's revealed truth. That's a powerful statement, right? So we have to, um, we're going to follow Jesus now. When we talk about following Jesus, now I want us to focus now on the context of the other worlds. This is, we're not going to follow him just arbitrarily like that. Christ has an objective. Now, this is the question now. Number, number, question number one now says now, does the scriptures and the spirit of prophecy support the idea of other worlds? Now, I have some text. You see, all these are in your handout. We're not, we're not by ourselves. We're not just some orphan in this by, this by ourselves and some green people out there. Does the spirit of prophecy in the Bible support the concept that there are other worlds out there? Yes. In Hebrews 1, 2, Paul says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he created other what? Words. S, plural, S, other worlds or galaxies, right? Hebrews 11, verse 3. Paul says, uh, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen are not made of the things which do not appear. So Paul is saying, we are not by ourselves. Don't be deceived. There are other worlds out there. I'm going to show you how intense that is. In Revelation 5, 13, Paul, um, John says, and every creature in, which is in heaven or creation, for lack of word. We are not just the only planet, brothers and sisters, right? Now, I love this one. This one speaks, speaks to it just clearly. Luke chapter 15, verse 4, the Bible says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, didn't say sheeps, but sheep, right? Or having a hundred planets, or a hundred worlds, If he lose one planet or one world, doth not leave the other worlds and go for this one little planet. Brothers and sisters, this text is a, a serious text. It's not just human beings. And we are told in the spirit of prophecy that our little planet that went renegade, God's going to exalt to a higher sphere where God's going to move his capital here. Earth is going to be exalted to a higher sphere than any other world that God created. You need a mic, right? So there are other worlds out there. And again, if you focus, and also in the book of Job, Job 1 verse 6, the sons of God came and to all these texts support the idea that there are other worlds. So guess what now? When the 144,000 follow Jesus, Wherever he goes in the wide creation, guess what? They will go with him. Amen. Go ahead, Ella. Now, it's interesting that as uh, speak of the world, all the world as we know it, mm-hmm. there are those out there who are conscious of somewhat that there are other worlds, or mm-hmm. at least other planets. Mm-hmm. 
Matter of fact, the gesture that Eli Mas had mm -hmm. made the other day by setting up that his car and this and that, mm -hmm. his idea is that Ali, it will encounter some alien of sort. Mm -hmm. The, the, the thing, however, they're going about it, acknowledging other world, uh, I would say, the wrong way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they are pursuing it of their own yeah. you know, mindset. But yeah. it's not anything that uh, is not acknowledged. Exactly. I mean, listen, uh -huh. it would be just weird to think we're the only ones in this entire universe. And then nobody's green out. They have a little two figure looking like this and one eye and their forehead and all these little... No, 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 no. In Acts 1, 24, Acts 1, 2, and 4, we know that Jesus spent 40 days on earth. I want you to follow me now. Come other worlds, right? And the Bible says that before he left, he spent 40 days on earth. Why 40? Because Pentecost meant 50. And so Pentecost will happen in 10 days. So he told them, tarry in Jerusalem. Right? Now we learned earlier that when Christ died, there were two ascensions. Right? One in John 20, where he went and he said, Mary... Touch me what? For I have not yet what? Ascended to my father. But then so then after he ascended, and he said, he said, he said to Philip, now Philip Thomas, do what? So at some point after his resurrection, he went to heaven. Right? And then now we realize that you know, when he resurrected, there were some, some folks who got put out of the grave, and they spent 40 days on earth also with, with Christ. And Ellen White says that one reason why God had to use them, because guess what? He didn't have any witness. All the disciples took off. I've learned that God will never leave that a witness. He will always have somebody to, to do his bidding, right? Even if he have raised the dead if he has to, right? Now, we learned also in Mark chapter 16, for the last time, he's leaving them and he has not returned, right? Now, at this time now, David quote the Psalms, lift up ye heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, the everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? They say, the Lord strong and mighty. This is when Jesus now was about to open, enter into the celestial city. Amen. Now, as he's coming in now as a, as a, as a, as a, as a warrior, with, with, with an entourage of those who, the sample of the, the first fruits, the second of the first fruits of the first fruits, right? Ellen White now paints a picture at the, 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 um, the parade of, 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 of beings that are there to meet him. Look what she says. Are there speech we know there? The, there ahead. is the throne, and around it the rainbow of promise. All right. There are cherubim and seraphim. So as, so as he's about to enter now, the domain now, he's, everything is laid out. There are cherubim and seraphim. Then she says, right, there are what? The commanders of the angel hosts. This is serious. These are, these are categories of, of, of beings, right? Then she says now. The sons of God. All right. Then she says now. The representative of the unfallen worlds are assembled. Do you get that? The representative of on. This was some little, little, little two, two group of people. Hmm. The, every other world has a representative. They are all there. Hold on. They are all there. Then she says now, right? The heavenly council before which Lucifer and the, uh, had accused God and his son. And then she says now, this is what blew my mind now. This, you got to stretch your imagination now. She says the what? The representatives of those sinless realms over which Satan had sought to establish his dominion. All right. Are all there to welcome the Redeemer. They're, they're, they're eager. eager to celebrate his triumph to the, to the glorified king. But focus on this now. Number four, representative of other unfallen worlds. Then she says now, those sinless realms. What is that? Now guess what now? If Jesus visits these realms, who's going to go with him? 144,000. This is serious. It's almost like a cheerleader. Look what she says now. Jesus left. No, um, this is not her, but my, my notes. Go ahead. Jesus left the adoration of sinless angels and worlds to come to this one lost world uh -huh. to save the wayward creatures made in his image. Uh -huh. The Bible also speaks of an out of this world council meeting in which the sons of God gathered before the Lord and Satan showed up to represent our planet. So there are other worlds out there. My point is right. Keep on now. Mm -hmm. But while the Bible seems to support the notion that there is life on other worlds, we should be careful to remember that the devil and his angels 
can easily create illusions to deceive us. And this is where we're trying to get at now, Ella, right? These, these bizarre manifestations now. Keep on reading, please. Remember that unfallen worlds are probably restricted from mingling with our sin-diseased planet. Stop. Do you believe that? I believe there's a quarantine. We are quarantined. There's like a cutoff. It's like we have the Ebola. You know, when, when the Ebola virus came on the scene, anybody had that. They were quarantined for days. So we are cut off. Nobody can come in, but the angels definitely can't go out. And they're watching us, right? Keep on reading. I see your hand. Go ahead. Now. That's why most UFO sightings are, more, are, are likely mere optical illusions or dangerous satanic deceptions. Uh -huh. No ET has not been seen, has not been here yet. After God creates the new earth, we will be able to freely travel and visit all of his creation. All right. But God is going to take the 144 wherever he goes. Go ahead, sir. Okay, one, two. Go, go ahead, Elizabeth. You need to take the mic. Um, we know when the president, uh -huh. like he's coming to Florida. Yes. Yeah, he would send um, secret service uh -huh. and they would make sure everything is okay. Uh -huh. Strict security and all of that, uh -huh. the place that he's going to drive uh -huh. and all of that. Now, I, I'm saying we know other, other, we, other, all the Christians will be able to visit other worlds. Uh -huh. But these 144,000, could it be they are operating like um, um, the security? The, the a secret service in the sense that some go before him, prepare the way, announce that the, the creator is coming, mm -hmm. get ready. You know, like yes, because, what you're because even God, when he was, um, when he's going anywhere, he would send, mm -hmm. you know, angels and they would yeah. announce it and all of that. And I have no idea. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is that, listen, we're going to follow Jesus. Whatever analogy you want to use, and I'm not saying that's not right, that, that, that's incorrect, but I, I, we going to follow him. Right? Now, look at this now, right? I love this. And this is such a powerful... I see you, honey, we're going to read it. This is from early writings now. She had a vision. And look what she said about these other worlds now. Please read. The Lord has given me a view of other worlds. Uh -huh. Wings were given me, and an angel attended me from the city to a place that was bright and glorious. Mm -hmm. The grass of the place was living green, mm -hmm. and the birds there warbled a sweet song. Mm -hmm. The inhabitants of the place were of all sizes. Mm -hmm. They were noble, majestic, and lovely. They bore the express image of Jesus, mm -hmm. and their countenances beamed with holy joy, Mercy. expressive of the freedom and happiness of the place. Mm -hmm. I asked one of them why they were so much more lovely than those of the, on the earth. Mm -hmm. The reply was, we have lived in strict obedience to the commandments of God and have not fallen by disobedience like those on the earth. Did you hear that? This is serious. Look what she says now, I saw. Then I saw two trees. One looked much like the tree of life in the city. Uh -huh. The fruit of both looked beautiful, but of one they could not eat. They had power to eat of both, but were forbid forbidden to eat of one. Uh -huh. Then my attending angel said to me, None in this place have tasted of the forbidden tree, uh -huh. but if they should eat, they would fall. Then I was taken to a world which had seven moons, there I saw good old Enoch who had been translated. So from this we learned that the plan of salvation was not just laid for earth. No. Earth would renegade. Man. In any one of God's vast creation. Because they have free will. Exactly. And by the way, when the earth is made new, what's, 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 what's going to be there? It's going to still be there and, 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 and the, the tree of good evil. He's not going to take it up. But we did not eat. Because the love of God will constrain, constrain us, right? Amen. Will restrict us. So but my point is that there, there are other worlds out there. Now, I like what, what Taylor Bunn said now. The question is, why? Why will God, Jesus, take the 144 to all these planets? Go ahead, sir. Well, um, I would like you to return quickly to the first um, sentence that you had about uh, probably the word probably um, and falling and mingling, something like that. Yeah. The first, the first sentence uh, that you had before. Is it the, the, the quotation? But while, yes. the, Bible, well, you were making the, but while the Bible seems to support the notion. Yeah. No, this, this is my words. It's not this inspiration. It's my thoughts I conjected. Oh, what, 
the statement that said um, probably the, the unfalling something or another will not. I, because I'm a little. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah, these are just my, okay. my words. I just I just, right. I just conjecture. Oh, it's, it's your words. Yeah, it's not inspiration. Oh, because I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering why. Remember that unfallen words mm. are probably restricted from mm -hmm. England. Yeah. They're, they're, they're on the underscore probably there. That's yeah. why I'm also yeah. prepared. But, yeah. uh, but another quick point since the, on the other point. In the case of the seven moons, mm -hmm. and I am, cannot be sure that it's the mm -hmm. same thing they were referring to, mm -hmm. but about five, six or years or so, mm -hmm. um, scientists have discovered there's a planet of at least seven moons. Mm -hmm. And I, I, found, I found that was very interesting. Oh, yeah. You know, they, obviously, they are not able to go anywhere near yeah, it. Yeah. But they determine it yeah. that they, you know. Listen, there's there. a whole galaxy out there, man. That's why we sell ourselves so cheaply, man. We are robbing ourselves. We pay a high cost for a low living, somebody says, right? Right? Hold on, I see your hand. We got, I got to press because time is against me now. Why? Why does God take them now? This is imperative now, right? This is from um, Taylor Bunch. And Taylor Bunch in his book... The revelation said this. Now, this is, this is evident. This is evidently a privilege not accorded to all the redeemed. And we know that, Christ, right? Christ will doubtless visit the unnumbered millions of unfallen worlds uh -huh. which he has created uh -huh. and will take with him this special temple choir and orchestra of arpists who, became, became, because of their experience in redeeming love, can sing the song of redemption as none others can sing it. Now remember this, we said, right, go ahead now. This will help make possible the promise that affliction shall not rise up the second time. Now remember the Levites help the music. So you can imagine it's going to be a wonderful service and they're going to sing this song. So one reason why God's going to take them because nobody else can sing this song. Right? She's in a special sense. He said in a special sense now. In a special sense, the 144,000 may represent the bride of Christ, mm -hmm. whom he takes with him on a wedding tour of the universe, mm -hmm. a privilege granted them because they had gone through experiences more like that of Christ than any others, so that they are more like him in oh, character. God. Wow. So, saints, if we are among that group, trust me, we're going to tour. That's why we can't get married, because you'll be gone so often. You're gone again. Honey, you're gone again. Tell Christ you need some time off. We ain't got time for that stuff, man. Shock you. God, you be touring, Ella. You know what I'm saying? Freedom. <laughs> freedom, freedom, right? All right, so they will tour the universe with Jesus. But this one, I like this one. Now, this one, this is, this was, Haskell made this point, right? I want you to listen. And again, you can take it for what it's worth. I think there's some merit to it. Has Stephen Haskell said now that the 144,000 will replace the vacancy made by Lucifer and his angels. No, this, 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 this is serious. Now, I'm going to show you where he was coming from, right? Stephen Haskell, we know, was not just any, he was a, he was a bulwark in our church. I'm quoting from the book called The Story of the, of the Seer of Patmos. Haskell said this now. John saw, John saw these surrounding the Savior on the Mount, Mount of God, the Mount of the congregation in the south of the north, where Satan once stood. And here he attempted to raise a throne for himself. The 144,000 occupy a place once filled by Lucifer and his angels. Oh, what a con commentary to the universe on the glorious triumph of truth over error, love over selfishness. Now, where was Haskell coming from at this now? Because I said, well, how did he get to this concept? Now, Haskell put two texts on the two texts he used to support it. Right? What does Zechariah 13, verse 8 and 9 and Revelation 12 verses and 4 have in common. They have one thing. They mention a one-third. Now Haskell is saying that the one-third is a type of the 144. Typology. Bible says, Zechariah now says, And it shall come to pass that, in, that all the land, said the Lord, two parts shall there remain, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be what? So, in other words, the only person that's going to live is a one-third. They shall not die. And the only group who will not die is the who? 144,000, right? Then he said now, right? Uh, then he said, and it shall come to pass. Is it the same thing? Oh, verse 9. Where's my verse 9? Right, verse 9 says that he's going to bring them to the fire. 
and going to refine them like silver and gold, right? Now, so Haskell is saying now that the, that the, that the, that the one-third is a type, almost like a typology of the 144,000. Now, Revelation 13, 12 we learned, and his tail took a third what? So there's a vacancy in heaven, right? Where's the vacancy? But what, what part? There's a third. Yeah, the throne, a third of angels, right? Now, he quotes now this um, in volume 5, Haskell quotes this now to support his concept. Now, 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 I want you to focus on the words and the time frame. So this vision, Zachariah's vision? Zachariah's vision of Joshua and the angel applies with peculiar force to the experience of God's people in the closing scenes of the great day of atonement. All right, stop now. They have atonement. What time frame is that? That's 1844 and what? And beyond. So that, that's us. Isn't that right? Amen. It can't be 1844 and beyond. It must be 1844 and forward. forward. That's us. Keep on reading now, please. The remnant church will then be brought into great trial and distress. So that's us. Because yes. there was no remnant back then. Right? Remnant came on the scene shortly after. All right? Keep on reading, please. Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus will feel the fire of the dragon and his hosts. Satan numbers the world as his subjects. Uh -huh. He has gained control even of many professing Christians. Uh -huh. But here is a little company who are resisting his supremacy. Now, if they're resisting, are they, are they, are they, are they, are they alive? Yeah. Has to be like you're resisting. Yeah. You can't resist when you're dead. But what's the context now, right? Then she says now. Look what he says now. If he could blot them from the earth, the triumph would be complete. Uh -huh. Satan has an accurate knowledge of the sins that he has tempted God's people to commit. All right, stop. So if he could blot them, so you can't blot them from the earth if they are dead. Mm -hmm. That means they're alive. Yes. Keep on reading now, please. And he urges his accusations against them, declaring that by their sins they have forfeited divine protection and claiming that he has the right to destroy them. Uh -huh. He pronounces them just as deserving as himself of exclusion from the favor of God. Now, stop now. She now is quoting Satan. Now, look what he says now about the remnant living in the end of time in the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. Look what he says now. Are these, he says, the people who are to take my place in heaven and the place of the angels who united with me? Are these? Them? Sister Vivian? <laughs> Brother Dennis? No, sir. Brother Evans? Him? Is going to take my place? In heaven? No, 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 no. So this is where Asker was coming from. Now again, you could take it for what it's worth. Study it through. Be like the Bereans. But I thought it was a wonderful Analogy he brought forth about the 144,000, the one third, and taking Lucifer's place, right? Go ahead, Ella. Two things. Uh, with reference to what you just said a while ago about mm -hmm. the 144,000, mm -hmm. Haskell says, I think we replaced the falling angel. Mm -hmm. So are we then to assume that that's one third <laughs> was only now 44,000? Well, and I always get that question. Yeah. Is it, you know, I don't know. I mean, when we get there, we'll anyway, see. This, way I, well, this is what I wanted to Go read ahead. before. This is a commentary from Ellen White. All right. And he's talking about mankind. Mm -hmm. He said that the topic is man, a new and distinct order. Mm -hmm. He said, all heaven took a deep and joyful interest in the creation of the world, mm -hmm. the creation of the world of man. Mm -hmm. Human beings were a new and distinct order. Mm -hmm. They were made in the image of God mm -hmm. and in the creator's design. Mm -hmm. And they should populate the earth. Mm -hmm. So... From the way this is said, mm -hmm. it appears to me like then the different worlds that are that already exist, mm -hmm. that those people weren't made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Because this is a new and distinct God. Mm -hmm. This was a price of God, this creation that he created. Mm -hmm. So they say all heaven mm -hmm. was interested mm -hmm. in this new order. Mm -hmm. Because this order was different, different from everything else. Different, different. So everyone wanted to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I just to bring that and you know, we're told, Ellen White says that if we would have, if we, if we as a people had followed God, there would have been a, a, a different order of beings on the earth. Mm. If we had lived what's in this book and the spirit of prophecy, we would have been, you talk about the head, we would have been superior intellectually, 
We are told God gave Israel finance as a stamp of his imprimatur. And I'm telling you something, I have yet to see a poor Jew. I'm sorry. And even the poorest one is still far. I don't know, they're just blessed, man. Listen, there are the, these, these little home health aid, who, who are you taking care of? You ain't taking care of no gypsy. Who's paying your salary? And the Jews. I'm telling you, that's just a given. God hadn't taken it. And the same thing God gave to them, he gave to us. Amen. And we are not a poor people. No. If you think Adventist is poor, think again. We are rich in substance, rich in faith, rich in health. We are a blessed people, right? Amen. Now, all right. So these are some facts. Now, I want to focus now. On, F says now, they will sing a new song. And no man can learn that song. That's serious. This, the text says, and no man can learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand. So if you're going to be in that choir, you're going to have to learn that song. So who's going to be their teacher? The teacher is experience. 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 Go ahead, sir. I, I, quick one, sir. And, and to the point you made earlier about the, um, the, the intelligence, if you may, mm -hmm. of this uh, um, side of people yeah. then. You know, it's as recent as over the weekend I was making the same point because I have a truth. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ability that I've seen displayed by man on this earth, mm -hmm. you know, the knowledge, the vastness, mm -hmm. uh, and the creativity, it, it's beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, as simple as we, we take m many things for granted, mm -hmm. uh, look at a airplane. Mm -hmm. And now it has become so, as it were, simple. Mm -hmm. For the man to blast off in space, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the vast amount of technology yeah. here, you can mm -hmm. make a phone call, mm -hmm. you can see it on the mm -hmm, road on mm -hmm. the TV, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I told, totally, I agree that there was some superiority. Oh, okay, definite, this. definite, definite, right? And so this is this is an imperative song. We're going to sing a song, brothers and sisters. That's why we're going to follow Christ. Now, it's just like if you can't sing, you can't sing in the choir, really. As a matter of fact, you know, at, at Oakwood. I think everybody could sing if you ask me who could, man. Even the guy singing in the shower. But there is, there's a group called the Aeolians. Yeah. Now, any Joe Blow can get in that thing, man. You got to know how to hold your own to get in that elite. It's just like the 144,000. And the song is not so much something vocal. It's their experience that have them sing that song, right? Very important. Go ahead, Sadina. You, you know, I, I saw the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir mm. and uh, Donnie McClurkin mm. singing a song and say... It's the song of Moses and the mm -hmm. Lamb. Mm -hmm. Sounds very heavily, mm -hmm. but that's not it. Mm -mm. That's not it. It's a song. No man can learn that song. Amen. But the 140, it's an experience that we must have with Jesus, right? So these are some of the privileges that they will have. We've gave, given you enough to inspire you to strive to be among. Now, we want to just bring this thing to a close in a few minutes now. There are some myths out there about the 144,000. Now, every denomination has some crazy lunatic that will come with some myths, right? Now, myth number one is that some say that Ellen White will be one of the 144,000. Now, they use this quotation. Now, you look at it, see? we can think tonight, right? Early writings, page 39, she says, now, please do the next now. The Lord has given me a view of all the worlds. Mm -hmm. Wings were given me. And an angel attended me from the city to a place that was bright and glorious. I begged of my attending angel to let me remain in that place. I could not bear the thought of coming back to the, this dark world again. Mm -hmm. Then the angel said, you must go back. And if you are faithful, you with the 144,000 shall have the privilege of visiting all the worlds and viewing the and the work of God. Now, see, let, let's, let's analyze that quotation. What is that saying? Along with. Then she's going to be. She's she's going to be one of them. Now, remember, we learned last week that she wanted to go where in the what? Temple. And and and, and Jesus said, no. and she didn't say, "Come on, you mean Jesus? I'm your prophetess. All the work me do, all the books me write. Where you top about? You gotta let me." She didn't know that she was a hallelujah. So while she couldn't go in the temple. Now, I've learned in school, every rule has an exception. What's, what's that? The man who makes the rule makes the exception. <laughs> right? So God makes the rule. So he made an exception that if you go back and you are faithful, while you can't go in the temple 
And you, while you may not be translated, but I'm going to make an exception tonight because for you, you are going to have the privilege. So when they travel, you will travel with them. Now, probably James White can't go. You know what I'm saying? It's White can't go. But you, a little exception. Okay, come then. Come, 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 sister White. You can't do this, right? So it doesn't say she's going to be one of the 144. No, she will enjoy a privilege that the 144 has that we don't have, right? So that's, so some who teach us she's going to be a part of it, that's not true. Then we have this, um, this other crazy ideology. This is from a shepherd's rod. And they teach the 144,000 will gather into Christ's fold the great multitude. This is quite Revelation 7. At least the rods believe that they're two separate groups. You know what I'm saying? They'll be the same. So they teach that the 144 will be the vehicle that God used Together, that is not true. Now, we, we had a whole lecture on the, one, the shepherd's rod. Go back in our archives, right? Victor Wutef is the rod's founder. Shepherd's rod, please read. The shepherd's rod literature teaches, let it be carefully noted that in his vision, John saw the 144,000 stand not on Mount Zion in heaven, mm -hmm. but upon earth, mm -hmm. for it had been otherwise. He would not say, and I heard a voice from heaven. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Now, this is incorrect. That's, that's Zionism. But look what they say now, right? Thus, Mr. Wutef. Thus, Mr. Wutef uh -huh. would have his followers believe that John, in Revelation 14, 1 to 5, 15, 2 to 3, saw the 144,000 organized and functioning as a special and distinct group up on earth in this present world before the close of probationary time. That's not true. As a matter of fact, you will not know who the 144,000 are until after probation closes. Because if you do receive the plague, you're lost. If you don't receive the plague, it's a sure sign that you are one of them. Because after probation closes, we learned there will be no more martyrs. We had a whole lecture on that. Right? Pardon me? Oh, no, we're preaching. So this is the Rod's concept. This is the Rod's, the Rod's teach now. This is what they teach. They teach that the 144,000 will come out of the church after they do the slaughtering. In Ezekiel chapter 9. So they slaughter the church, and those who remain are the 144 now. They say the 144 go out now, converts the great multitude, right? That is error. That is heresy. That is not scriptural. It is extra scriptural. What does the Bible teach? This is what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that in God's church, you're going to have wheat tears. and you're going to have tears. The Bible teach now that when the latter rain falls, it falls not so much on the tears, but on the wheat. The wheat are now empowered to go out of God's church and give what we call the loud cry. Revelation 18 verse 1. Jesus says, other sheep I have. At that time now, millions come out of those foreign churches, out of Babylon, Dragon beast and false prophet now. The other sheep come out of Babylon, right? And when God calls out the last sheep out of Babylon, probation closes now. And what God will do now, he will take, he decides, he will take some of those who started a loud cry and some of those who came out during the loud cry, God chooses the 140 and 4,000. We don't choose who they are. God chooses. This is, what, this is how you know them. They don't just come to have in this church. You can't even find 20 in the church that's faithful. She says not one in 20. So this is what the Bible teaches. The other stuff needs to go in the trash can. It's not scriptural, right? Um, one, then two, then that, that's it. Go ahead now, sir. By the time the 144,000 identified, probation been closed. Of course, definitely. So, definitely, you know. definitely, definitely, definitely. Probation has closed a long time. Go ahead, sir. And those pastors who is going to be martyred uh -huh. for the Sabbath, uh -huh. people that are going to be martyred for the Sabbath, must receive the latter rain. So Definitely. even if they are not among the 144,000, mm -hmm. they have to live as though mm -hmm. they are like the 144,000. Yeah, strive, she says, right? So what am I saying? Beloved, tonight, the admonition to you and I as you leave. Okay, you need a mic. You need a mic, Sister, Sister Paula. You need a mic. Hold on, talk to the mic. We're going to get you on YouTube, man. Go ahead. So what will happen to those rest of the people that after God chose the 144,000? They will... Okay. 
All right, let, 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 let me go back to my chart. The 144,000 will actually come into fruition right here. Probation already closed. All right, now, so everybody, listen, if, 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 you're, if, 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 if you're righteous and God's going to put you to death, it'll be from here. Once we hit here, we have a whole lecture on it. We learned on it. There'll be no more martyrs after probation. Because she says, because the blood, it'll be, it won't be a seed. Permission closed, no more martyrs. So you'll know the 144 right here. This is when they come to, but who are they preaching to? Why? Because probation already closed. The plagues are falling. So the shepherd's rod teach that the 144 comes into fruition here. That's not scriptural. Talk to the mic, talk to the mic, talk to the mic. Ellen White said, when they are sealed, immediately the mm. angel went mm. to heaven mm. and tell Christ, and Christ threw down the yeah. censer mm. and said, it is done. Yeah. So whenever they seal, probation just closed. Yeah, God calls them off. This is where, uh, and he says, we live in some, some, some exciting times. I want to encourage you, let us strive, as she says, as we close. Did I answer your question, Sir Paula? Yeah, so that means the other will be dead then. Yes, that's what and that's, that's, that's what we were saying, that there were two, two groups. You had the 144,000, and you have the great multitude. Thinking that the 105,000 is a literal number. That, that well, and, and, that's, and that's the million dollar question. Listen, no, I have, I have done my, my homework and I can share you my thoughts, but then I would encourage you to go and study. But we shouldn't get into the debate with this literal symbolic because that's where the debate comes. Let's just make sure we have the characteristics. Amen. Right? Amen. And if you have the characteristics, then with the literal symbolic, hey, you'd be on the safe side. Now, really and truly saying, I'm going to tell you something. I'll be honest with you. I believe if it is symbolic, we stand a better chance. Because <laughs> if it is really literal, Lord have mercy on the preacher, I'm saying, because I'm nowhere near here getting, learn, learn about getting to heaven one for the 4,000, right? So please, you know, let's, just, let's just pray that God has mercy on us. And so tonight as we leave, leave with this. Let us strive. Saying, come on, we can do it. I believe we can do it with all the power mind, soul, and body that God has given us to be among the hundred and forty and four thousand. Amen? Amen? With that, let us stand and sing a song that will cheer us on the way. My faith looks up to you as we lift this evening's offering. And ladies, please help us as we cut the offering. Hymn 517, my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. We want to follow God by faith in the most holy place. My faith, my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Hear me while I pray, take all my guilt. From this day, the ladies only. All together now. Thou hast died for me. Oh, may my love be your and changes be your living. Gentlemen, on that base now. Why life's dark maze I tread and griefs around me spread. Be Thou, my God, all together now. Bid darkness turn to day. White sorrow steals away. Nor let me ever stray from thee. Aside. Father in heaven.
and tonight, Lord, didn't our hearts rejoice as we spend this time within your courts? Oh, Lord, as we have seen and heard and received, may we all make a concerted effort to strive to be among that 144,000, believing all things are possible if we put our hands in the Master's hands. As we leave now, God, to go back to our homes, please give us safe traveling journeys. May we find our homes in the same manner we left them. Give us all a good night. Let's take on tomorrow's challenges and bring us here back at the appointed time is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.